Have you ever played Stardew Valley and wished there were more dodge rolls? Have you ever played Sekiro and wished that you could grow tomatoes? Well, I have these same wishes, so I decided to play Stardew Valley with the rules of a Souls-like game to see if it was possible and how hard it would actually be. For those unaware, a Souls-like is a game that's similar to Dark Souls, which is known for its difficulty as well as some unique mechanics that we're going to be translating into this challenge. I started off by making my protagonist John Dark Soul and made him look as much like the Wretch class from Elden Ring as I could. I also named the farm Farm Soft Farms, which is probably funny if you're a fan of Souls-like and probably sounds weird if you don't get it. In terms of goals for this challenge, I have three main ones. Completing the community center is an obvious one that's pretty standard for challenges like this. I also want to complete three of the monster eradication goals. In Souls-like games, you're constantly fighting enemies, so I feel like this would be a good way to quantify fighting monsters and have a trackable goal for that. And the final goal is to get married just to flex on all those sad, lonely gamers out there that are good at Souls-like games because they spend too much time playing them and not enough time talking to women. Now in terms of rules, I think this is where things get interesting. One of the main standout mechanics of a Souls-like is their death mechanic. When you die in a Souls game, you lose all of your currency and get restarted at a checkpoint, and you need to go back to wherever you die to get that currency back. I figured the best way to do this would be if I run out of energy or die in the mines, I'm going to lose all of my money unless I can make it back to the level that I was before in the mines. And also, just to raise the stakes a little bit since that might be a little bit too easy, if I die or run out of energy, I will also lose everything in my inventory other than the main tools that you normally start with. The other main mechanic of a Souls game is that you can only spend your currency at bonfires, which basically basically act like checkpoints. I figured the best way to do this would be by having our bonfires be the mine elevators. Basically, I can't buy anything from any shops unless I get to a level in the mines with an elevator that day. This will obviously take some pretty careful planning and time, so I think it'll make things interesting. There are a few other minor rules, which are that I can only sell directly to merchants and I can't use the shipping bin, and I also can only consume two things a day, which would be like the Estus flasks in Souls game to replenish health. Also, obviously no spa to replenish energy. If that doesn't really make a lot of sense, then just keep watching and you'll catch on, it's not that hard. On day one, I woke up and was greeted by one of the most important things in this challenge, the gifted parsnip seeds. The mines don't open until day five, and I initially thought that I should be allowed to buy things while I wait for the mines to open, but I realized that in a Souls game, they would make it as hard as possible, so instead I can't buy anything without the mines, so the earliest I can get there is day five. I really needed to start thinking about who I wanted to marry because trust me, you do not want to be maidenless in Stardew Valley. I'm considering Leah because she's at the bar a lot and she loves salad, which means I could fairly quickly romance her. I did a bit of foraging, then made a chest because I know that I'm going to run out of room very quickly since I can't use the shipping bin. I did manage to get a gold ore from an artifact spot, which was kind of funny. I can't obviously do anything with it now, but we are one step closer to getting a gold bar, I guess. On day two, I got the fishing pole from Willy. I spent most of my energy fishing, and I sold directly to Willy the fish that I didn't have to donate, so I could just start building up as much money as I could. I had a couple left over by the time Willy's shop closed, so I just put them away for now and figured I would just go sell them tomorrow. I ran out of energy pretty quick, so I focused on once again trying to introduce myself to people, which I was able to do for everybody except Leah, because I guess she's trying to play hard to get. For the rest of the day, I just chopped more trees and got more wood for chests, and I ended off the day getting level 1 fishing and foraging. It was raining as always on day 3, so I spent a bit more time getting wood because, like I said, I'm going to need chests. I'm really used to throwing stuff in the shipping bin at the end of the day, but with almost all of the shops closing at either 4 or 5, it meant I would probably miss them a lot and I would need somewhere to put all of the excess. Since it was raining, I tried to get a catfish, but at level 1, these things are much harder to grab, so I decided to just give up. After failing on the catfish, I decided to hang out outside of Leah's house in a not creepy way, but more of like a hey, I need to talk to you to progress my mission kind of way. There's a difference. I spoke with her then immediately gifted her a shell, which got me 100 gold for the How to Win Friends mission, so now I was over 1000 gold. I woke up mad on day 4 because when I got outside, I saw a crow had eaten one of my parsnips, which seemed kind of unfair because I literally don't even have the ability to make a scarecrow, but I guess that's just that classic Souls-like difficulty coming through. Day 4 was the last day before I could go to the mines and start buying things, so I really needed to make the most of it. I pretty much just fished until my inventory was full, then would move to Willy's to sell them, then repeat that. I ended off the night with level 2 fishing. Day 5 is a pretty big day because it's Friday, which means the traveling merchant is here and of course the mines open up, so it's gonna be a pretty full day. When I woke up on day 5, I was gifted a dog, which I named Torrent, and harvested my free parsnips, but I made sure to hold on to one so that I could donate it later. 
After that, I headed straight to the merchant to see what she was selling, but honestly, nothing really caught my eye. I headed to the mines, and I'm given a sword by a character who looks like they really did pull him out of a Souls game. I made my way down and pretty quickly made it to level 5 with an elevator, so I made sure to get copper when I could since I'll need that later, and I still had plenty of time in the day. I almost dropped all of my money on crops to maximize my profits, but instead I made sure to leave about 1500 gold just in case the traveling merchant had something good on Sunday. I really don't want to be in a position where she has something that I need like red cabbage seeds, but I don't have the money to buy it. I mean, I say that, but I also bought a couple salads to gift Aaliyah because they are her favorite and I do plan to marry her. I leveled up farming and mining, which means I can now craft a scarecrow. Too little too late. It was another rainy day on day 6, and Willy wanted a herring, so I figured this would be a good excuse to go fishing again. I grabbed one pretty quickly and gave it to Willy for a sad amount of gold, then I decided once again to go for the catfish since it only spawns in rain. I'm sure there's plenty of other opportunities to get a catfish, but since I need money now, getting a valuable fish could be really good. I did manage to get one, but I also need to donate it, so I didn't technically make any money from it, but it's still good to go ahead and get that out of the way. After that, I headed to the mines, where I killed enough slime to go to the Adventurer's Guild, which means the monster eradication goal is now officially starting. To end off the night, I got level 3 fishing. Day 7 was my first Sunday, so I'm back to check on the traveling merchant. There was a community center item, but it wouldn't be worth buying or wasting a level in the mine, so I decided to skip out on buying anything for now. Plus, I really need to save up money for in case I do need to buy something urgently. The community center opened up to me on this day, so I quickly lined my pockets with everything that I needed to donate, then remembered you can't actually donate anything until you talk to the wizard a day later. That's honestly fine though, because I didn't even have a leak to donate, so I couldn't complete a bundle anyway. I wasted a lot of this day trying to find a leak, but I didn't have any luck. After that I went to the mines to try to slay some more monsters because I had a little bit of energy left, then I gifted Emily and Amethyst just in case things don't work out with Leah. Day 8 started with me visiting the wizard, who I wished would have taught me some spells, but instead he just taught me how to speak the Junimo language. Like, hey, there's a lot of scary monsters down there, you think maybe you should teach me something like Glenstone Pebble or like... Rock sling or something? Oh no, just, just the language? Okay, cool. On the way to the wizard's tower, I found an artifact which I donated to get more cauliflower, which was great because that's nothing but profit for me, which I definitely need since it's day 8 and I have made 3,500 gold. That is not ideal. Money aside though, I did find a leak on my way back to the farm so I could officially complete the spring foraging bundle, which got me some spring seeds, which once again is nothing but profit, so we take those. I wanted to try to get to level 5 fishing fairly quickly so I could get increased fish selling price. I even brought a chest out to the dock so I didn't have to keep going back and forth. I was really working hard on that fishing. Since most of my energy was spent on watering my crops, I was only able to catch a couple of fish before getting tired and I really didn't want to risk passing out and losing the gold that I already had. I woke up on day 9 to my crops being eaten again so I need to make sure that I make another scarecrow. This one hurt extra bad because it was a green bean crop which means it would have kept producing all season so I was pretty annoyed about that. After walking around the beach I found a clam which means I just need one more item to complete the crab pot bundle. I figured that another forageable item would show up so I didn't bother to make a crab pot even though I couldn't do it if I wanted because I still need iron for it. Keep in mind I'm not even past level 10 in the mine so things are going to be pretty slow in terms of resources like iron and gold since they're basically locked behind certain days where I need to buy. Lucky for me, day 10 rolled around and I could make a little bit more progress in the mines. I headed straight there and found a couple cave carrots, one of which Shane requested. I figured I could hold on to the other one so that I could donate to the community center. I mean, that's what I would have done if I hadn't gotten to level 10 and then decided to keep going for some reason. I think I was maybe trying to go and get some more resources, but look at that health bar. Does that look like the health bar of somebody that should have kept going? Since I was so high up in the mines, I had not looked at my health at all because honestly, who dies on level 13 of the mines? Me, apparently, which means now everything in my inventory gets trashed, which includes the cave carrots that were part of the main reason I went down there, so I guess you could consider this day a big waste of time. Just as a reminder, since I died on level 13, tomorrow I will need to get back to that level, and if I don't, I will lose all of the money that I have, which, mind you, is not that much, but it still wouldn't be good. I did level up combat to level 1, which is fine, I guess. I can now make bug steak, which definitely will help me in a bind if I'm close to dying. 
Luckily for me, it was raining again on day 11, so I headed straight to the mines because I didn't want to be in a situation where I can't make it to level 13 and lose everything. Making it to level 13 was pretty easy, but I was smart enough not to try to push my luck again and get to another elevator level. I had a decent bit of crops that I was holding on to, so I headed out to sell them to Pierre since he was closed yesterday. Since tomorrow was Friday, I knew I would want to have as much money as possible since the merchant might have something good, and if I buy something from her, I might as well buy more crops, so once again, time to fish since that was pretty much the quickest way I could get money. I did manage to catch an eel, which I could donate, and I had a decent bit of fish that I could sell tomorrow if I needed to. At the end of the day, just before heading to bed, I remembered that I needed to find Robin's lost axe, so quickly I took care of that so I could get paid, I mean, help Robin. Still nothing good from the merchant on day 12, and it was a bad luck day, so not really any reason to go to the mines. First I headed to Robin's to bring her her axe, and then I realized that tomorrow is the festival, which means that I need to build up money so that I can buy strawberry seeds. I went back to fishing and something pretty bad happened. Apparently Elliot decided that my chest was in his way, so he just walked straight through it and blew it up. Luckily I already sold the fish that were in it, but I did lose out on all of the wood that I used to make that, as well as a little bit of bait. That was pretty sad to see. Day 13 is the day of the egg festival, which means I can't go into town, so instead I'll once again waste my energy on cleaning up the farm, because there's not really anything else to do. I headed into the festival and spent as much as I could on strawberry seeds. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I'm allowed to buy things from the festival since I don't really have the option to go to the mines, and I consider festivals something like a special exception. I bought 15 strawberry seeds, which probably doesn't seem like too much, but I need to keep up a decent bit of money in case the merchant does have something good. After the festival, I made sure to plant my strawberries and also fertilize them so that I could get the most profit. I'm really hoping these strawberries can sustain me for the rest of the season. I'm getting tired of saying it, but the merchant still did not have anything good on day 14. It looked like tomorrow I would have a lot of crops grown in so I could sell those and see where I was at with money so I could decide where I wanted to go from there. I came across Haley, so I decided to gift her a daffodil since she was standing right there, and apparently it was her birthday so I got some extra hearts because of that. I didn't even really plan that, but it did make me start to rethink who I wanted to romance. I still like Leah better, but Haley now has the most hearts, and you know what they say. You should always settle on what's easiest when it comes to love. Also, she likes daffodils, which are free, as opposed to Leah, who likes 200 gold salads. I ended off the night and had the crop fairy come by to bless my crops, or whatever the crop fairy does. I don't know, I would probably step on it if I saw it. A good thing I didn't violently kill the crop fairy, because on day 15 I had a ton of crops grown, though mostly they were foraging items. Up to this point I had been flying through the mines when I go, but I got to the mines a little bit later than I should have and spent almost half the day in there. If I had planned properly, I would have placed a chest outside of Pierre's shop so I didn't have to run back home to get all the things that I wanted to sell, but also we saw what happened last time I placed a chest down, so probably not smart. I ended up with enough money to buy a coop, but I didn't have enough wood to build it, so I ran back home to try to chop as much as I could. Unfortunately, I knew I wasn't going to have enough time to get the wood and make it to Robin's shop before it closed, so I just cut my losses and spent my money on more crops so this elevator level wasn't a complete waste of time. I planted and watered the crops and ended off with level 3 foraging, which means I can now make a tapper. On day 16, my green beans had finally grown in, which means I can finish the spring crop bundle at the community center. After that, it is straight back to the mines. I went down there so that I could upgrade my axe, but honestly, I probably should have waited until I had other things to do. I still had the axe that I could donate, but there wasn't really anything else that I spent my money on. I donated some artifacts to the museum, which got me some melon seeds, which I just decided to hold on to until next season. But once again, I can't complain about free money. On my way to the beach, I stopped in to talk to Haley, who was prophetic and telling me about things washing up on the beach, because when I got there, I found a cockle, which I could donate to complete the crab pot bundle. I managed to get some decent fish before running out of energy, then headed to the community center to donate the cockle, which got me three crab pot. Oh, I don't smoke, but thank you anyway. At the end of the night, I got level 2 mining, which unlocked staircases to go down one level in the mines, which I have decided will be banned for this challenge, because honestly that just seems like cheating. On day 17, I fished outside of Willie's shop while I waited for him to go in so I could sell, and I ended up getting an ancient sword from a treasure chest, which is fitting because I am a great warrior who definitely did not die on level 13 of the mines. I wanted to get the coop today, but I decided it would be best to wait until past Sunday to get that because it's a lot of money for me right now and I still don't want to be broke if something good is at the traveling cart. After that I headed down to go try to do some more of the monster extermination goals because I wasn't sure how hard or easy this was going to be, like is this just something that's going to happen as I'm in the mines or do I need to be deliberate with doing what I'm doing? I decided to err on the side of caution and just hit whatever was in my way. This must have been working too because I got level 2 combat. 
On day 18, my new axe was ready, so I grabbed that, and on my way to the secret woods, I stopped by Haley's house. I got a hard event between her and Emily, where Emily was definitely in the right, but man, sometimes you just gotta stand up for your girl. But other times you gotta look it up on the Stardew Valley wiki and see what the right answer is. Though maybe that wasn't the best idea, because apparently clicking back into the game from the wiki made it so that I chose the top option, which just so happened to be me berating Haley and calling her whiny. I'm pretty sure this loses me some friendship points with Haley, so the moral of the story is you can't just use the wiki to find true love. Or something like that. There's definitely a lesson to be learned here. But the bad things don't stop here, because for some reason I thought the copper axe could break the log in front of the secret woods, but apparently that's a steel axe that does that. Just remember, just because I'm making this video doesn't mean I'm good at this game. To end the day off, I made a tapper and put it on a pine tree so that I could get some pine tar for the community center. Day 19, and the merchant was actually selling everything that I needed for the community center. She was even selling things I didn't know she sold. She sold me a used Honda Civic. Yeah, I'm lying. I just didn't want to say that I wasted another trip out there again. It wasn't all bad, though, because I did end up getting the quality parsnips that I needed to donate, so that was a little bit of a weight off of my shoulders. I got really lucky with getting a diamond from a chest, but I decided I should hold on to it until I can get a crystallarium to duplicate it. That would be a really nice source of steady income if I was able to get it this early, but it's locked behind a pretty steep cost. Clint wanted some copper, so I headed back to the mines and did the usual killing monsters and looking for ore. It was still a fairly successful day in the mines since I did get some geodes and some gems, but I did not have all of the ore that Clint wanted. As a cherry on top, I leveled up my farming and fishing, which means now my fish will sell for more, which should be useful. Today is day 20, which is also Shane's birthday, and since I bothered to check and see, I might as well bother to give him a gift as well. I wasn't really interested in going back to the mines today, so instead I decided to do some more fishing since I would get some extra money for it. Turns out Willie's shop was actually closed today, so I just needed to hold on to them until I could sell it. I worked on getting another tapper so that I could get some maple syrup for a bee house, which should be a nice steady source of income. Then after that, I realized I hadn't used my newly upgraded axe, so I hit some trees and grabbed some hardwood, which I'm sure I would need eventually. Not really sure for what, but it's in the game for a reason. I made sure to go talk to Haley, but honestly, at this point, I don't think it's possible for me to hit four stars with her before that dance. I stopped by the bar and saw Shane in there, and remembered that it was his birthday, so I gave him a daffodil because I figured everybody likes daffodils. Apparently that is not true, because Shane dislikes daffodils, and he was not happy that I gave him that on his birthday. Honestly, I probably should have just checked the wiki, but also I really don't care about it, so cry about it. Day 21 is Sunday, which means it's a merchant day. I hate you. There were actually some things for the community center, like a fried egg or a coconut, but why would I buy a coconut when I know I'm going to have to get to the desert eventually anyway? You can't give me red cabbage or even like a fruit or something? I'd even settle for something that's slightly inconvenient. I just want to buy something at this point. I checked on the request board and saw that if I slayed some slime, I would get 500 gold, which seemed plenty worth it because I already had to slay some slime and 500 gold is really good money right now. On the way to the mines, I stopped by to gift Haley another daffodil and got her up to 3 stars, so maybe it'll be possible to get to 4 stars? Guess we'll see. I was in the mines because I also wanted to get a coop, but I was out there for a little bit longer than I had anticipated, and since I didn't even bring any of the materials, I decided to hold off on getting that until level 25 tomorrow. I did try to get some slime while I was here just to not waste the trip, but I also got some decent items like retaining soil, so I guess it was worth it in the long run. At the end of the night, I just focused on getting wood, since tomorrow I will be getting the coop for real this time. I know I've been saying this, but this time I'm for real. On day 22, my mom sent me 500 gold, which made me feel good because my wallet was looking nicer than it ever had before. I mean, I'm going to be spending most of it today, but still, I like to see 5 digits instead of 4. While I was in the mines, I killed a special slime, which I was hoping would drop something useful, but instead dropped boots that were worse than the ones that I already had, so thanks for nothing. I will be killing more of you. I got to level 25 with no issues, and I was actually smart enough to bring the wood and stone that I would need so I could go straight to Robin's place to get the coop. That is a bit of a risky move, because if I die in the mines, that means I lose all of those important resources, but hey, that's nothing for a guy who has never died on level 13 of the mines. Not me though, I, I was kinda nervous. I then went and sold some crops and totally forgot to buy any crops to replenish on the farm, so that was gonna be not so great. I'll probably have to head back to the mines tomorrow. To end the day off, I looked around for some dandelions since I know Haley likes those and the season is going to be over soon. It's back to the mines on day 23 because I wanted to get a copper pick and I still needed to get some of those crops, so now I need to get to level 30 of the mines. I really did want to try to spread out my visits to the elevator levels of the mines, but I also wanted to get a good push into next season for what I could because I knew it was going to be really difficult once I started getting to the bottom of the mines. 
My luck was really good while I was down there. I was seeing a lot of monsters and I was finding ladders super fast, so I was feeling really good. I dropped off my pick to Clint and also got some geodes broken up while I was there. I got some iron ore, which would be good because iron starts spawning on level 40 of the mine, so it still might be a little while before I'm able to get there. After that, I finally remembered to stock up on parsnips since that is the only crop that would grow in time for the end of the season, and I talked to Haley one last time to try to get her to dance with me. Unfortunately, it did not go up to four hearts, so I felt a little bit bad and went and donated a cave carrot to the community center. I made an iron ore and realized that I can use a recycling machine to get a small 21% chance that trash will give me iron ore. It's not super likely, but it's better than nothing, so I made one and started processing what I had. I ended off the day with level 3 mining and level 4 foraging. Day 24 is the day of the dance, so I can't really leave my farm, which is actually fine because I can just continue fishing for trash to try to get some iron ore. I pretty much just sat at my pond trying to get trash until the dance started, and once it did, I didn't really stick around for too long since I knew I couldn't dance with anyone. Now Alex is added to my list of villains for dancing with my girl. He and Elliot are now enemy number one, above any of those monsters that I have to fight. My copper pick was ready on day 25, so I headed to the mines before realizing that I forgot my sword, so there wasn't really much that I could do down there. Might as well switch over to fishing for a little bit, but I got kind of bored with that since I was doing alright on money, and I decided to go work on some of the monster eradication goals. I was starting to get kind of nervous because a thousand slime doesn't seem like that much, but when you aren't able to go to the mines as much as you want, it does make things a little bit more complicated. It would definitely be good to get one of these goals as soon as possible because some of the rewards are pretty useful, like the vampire ring that gives you back health when you slay a monster. My coop was ready on day 26, so that gives me the perfect excuse to go to level 35 in the mines. I was so excited to get a chicken that I completely forgot to check with the merchant in the morning like I usually do, but like come on, she hasn't had anything good for a while, so why would she start now? I did end up making it through and headed over to buy a chicken whose name randomized to Zachabel, which was goofy, so I kept it. Hopefully no one named Zachabel is watching. Sorry if you are. I checked in with the merchant and I actually did buy something this time. It was wine, which honestly I probably could have made myself, but also I just wanted to give her some money so she would start actually bringing things. While I was on the beach, I found a clam and since I felt kind of bad for giving Shane a bad present on his birthday, I went ahead and gifted it to him. I'm a good guy. Other than the fact that I want to kill two other residents. I made my way home feeling pretty good about myself until I realized I did not water any of my crops, so I had to eat a fish to make sure I had enough energy to water everything, which I still didn't, and I had to leave a couple things alone before I went to sleep. On day 27, I finally unlocked the cave, and I had the ability to choose the bat or mushroom cave option. I actually ended up going with the fruit bat option, because I've never actually chosen that before, and I wanted to see what it was like. Also, I need some fruit for the community center, and mushrooms are easier to find in the wild than fruit. I had intended to go fishing today, but I ended up spending all day in the mine just trying to find monsters, which I think went well enough. As I made my way home, I realized that since I chose the fruit bat option, I was going to need to get mushrooms from somewhere else. Usually when I play, I get the community center mushrooms from the cave, but now I would either need to get them from the merchant or find them in mines, which I don't think would be too bad because they're common, but I'm still not able to progress down there normally, so it might be a little bit more difficult. I went to sleep for the night, where I got level 5 farming and I chose the tiller profession for more crop worth because rancher is just not worth it. We finally made it to the final day of the season, and to celebrate, the merchant is still not selling anything good. I know I shouldn't rely on the merchant for things, but getting more than like one thing worth buying would be nice after 28 days. I decided to spend this day working on getting wood because now I have my sights set on getting a barn. I also stopped by the fruit bat cave and I have to say I love the way that the bats look in this. The little red eyes are a really nice touch. I donated a wild plum and realized that I could probably complete the construction bundle, which I did and unlocked the vault. I did have the money for it, but it was also about to be a new season, so I didn't want to spend anything right now. But trust me, I have not forgotten my diamond cloning plan. It's a good plan. The 29th was the first day of summer, so of course I had to clear out all of my old crops to make room for the new ones. I got some maple syrup from my tree, but I still needed iron to make a bee house, so I'm gonna save it for now. Typically, I like to forage on the first day of a season, but instead I need to book it to the mine so that I can get crops to plant early. I was making it through the mines pretty slowly, but I was at a low enough level that my rusty sword just wasn't cutting it anymore, so I might need to buy a new one soon. 
This was solidified when I made it to level 40 at like 4 p.m., meaning I barely even had time to go to Pierre's shop before it closed. I did make it though and bought all the crops as well as a poppy seed for the community center and sunflower seeds for the community center as well as the fact that Haley loves them so it should be an easy way to raise hearts. On day 30 I spent some time foraging to try to finish the summer foraging bundle but I didn't have any luck finding a grape so I headed back to the mines to try to get some ore. I got enough to make a couple bars which is less than I wanted but I also found a winter root and a frozen geode that I could donate so I guess that's something. Someone requested me to catch a pike which reminded me that I need to work on getting the summer exclusive fish so I guess tomorrow I'll be doing the summer fishing. I made it back home and smelted my iron so I could make a bee house and ended off the night with an earthquake which opens up the sauna that I can't use so that means nothing to me. First thing I did on day 31 was make a bee house so I could get some of that money from the honey it produced. I also completely forgot to buy any chicken feed for my chicken and since it's raining today I guess it's just gonna have to starve because I'm not wasting an elevator level on that. Sorry Zachabelle I can't feed you today, I'm doing a challenge. I'm sure you understand. I realized I hadn't donated any lake fish so I spent some time catching those and donating them so I could get a spinner that I can't even use. I went to go see Haley where I got her 4 star heart event where I opened a jar for her. Didn't realize love was that easy. And then I went and used some wood to open up the other part of the beach because I guess I forgot I was supposed to be getting a barn so I should be saving my wood. Can you tell I didn't plan things properly when doing this? Alright, the first note that I have for day 32 is that I'm going to save money for a house upgrade so I can cook, so I guess the barn idea is just out of the window now. Basically, I'm saving for whatever pops into my brain at the moment. On the way to the mines, I managed to find a grape, which means I could finish the foraging bundle, and then I was having pretty good luck while I was down there. Like, there was this room that was full of a ton of iron, so I probably spent a little bit longer down there than I normally would. I made it to level 45 and after seeing how much health I lost, I decided just to bite the bullet and buy a wood mallet from the Adventurer's Guild instead of waiting for something good to drop. I also stopped by Pierre's and bought some more melons for the quality bundle and some wheat so that I could get hay to feed my chicken. Once I finished up the summer foraging bundle, I got summer seeds, so I ended off the night with planting and watering them for profit. Day 33 was another merchant day, and finally she had something that I needed. She was selling a duck feather, which meant if I could buy this, I wouldn't have to spend money on a duck, because I wouldn't be required to get a duck egg for another bundle if I got all the other items in that bundle. I made it through the mines pretty easy and bought the duck feather as well as a quality sprinkler, because honestly, I just wanted one. I don't know, I don't have to justify everything to you. On day 34, I went straight back to the mine so I can make sure that this time I can buy the chicken food for Zachabelle. I ran into another special slime and wouldn't you know it this one dropped a level 3 iron edge because of course something like that would happen whenever I buy a new weapon a few days before. It'll be good to have both because if I die and lose one I'll be able to use one as a backup but yeah this was annoying. I ended up one level before the elevator but I was almost out of health and it was an infested room so I decided not to risk it and just head out. Sorry, Zachabelle. I finished up the Adventurer's Bundle, and after that I went fishing where I ran into the Legendary Fish. Catching a Legendary Fish isn't really part of the goals, but I feel like it fits in with the Souls-like difficulty thing, so I would like to catch one if I can. The bees came through on day 36 by finally producing some honey, which I could donate to the community center, and after that I checked with the merchant to see if spending money meant anything good for her stock. And I guess it kind of did, because she was selling battery packs, which I know are useful, but I didn't want to get them because I didn't have much use for them right now, and they're pretty expensive. Since I chose the fruit bat cave option, I thought it might be in my best interest to invest in some preserve jars to make the fruit worth more, so I set out on chopping some more trees for wood. I figured I might as well spend the rest of my energy on getting wood since I'm either going to need to upgrade the coop or get a barn, and I would need wood for both. Only other thing of note is that I ran into Abigail and gifted her a pine cone. I wonder why nobody wanted to dance with me at the flower festival. Okay, it's day 36 and I will get chicken food, even if it kills me. Please don't be foreshadowing. Now as I go through the mines, you Stardew Valley pros might have noticed something that I didn't notice at this time. Today is Monday. Uh, for some of you that means nothing, and it meant nothing to me, but Mondays are Marnie's day off, which means I got all the way down to level 55 without the ability to buy any chicken food. In order to make this trip not completely worthless, I went ahead and bought a new fishing pole since that's pretty much the only thing that I needed to buy. I did consider upgrading my water can to preserve energy, but I think that would be best saved for the end of a season or when I have more sprinklers. After that I was low on energy so I was just hitting artifact spots and foraging for the rest of the night. Some crops grew in on day 37 so I have the ability to donate the poppy and a sunflower. The sunflower actually drops sunflower seeds so this is basically an infinite love glitch, which is pretty great because it means all I need to do is remember to gift the sunflowers to Haley when I can. Admittedly that legendary fish was still on my mind so I headed back to the ocean 
section, and I actually hooked it on my first cast, but lost it just as fast as I found it. I ran into that fish about four more times, but each time was just as bad as the first, and to be honest, I was having trouble catching any fish other than the tuna, so I knew it would be in my best interest to take a full day to fish to ensure I got all that was needed for the community center. That was actually pretty much it for this day. I definitely felt like I wasted it, but it was good to take a break from going to the mine, so it was a good distraction. Alright, it's day 38, and I will get hay for real now today. It's not Monday, so I'm gonna have time to go to Marnie's shop and feed my starving child. I forgot the luau was tomorrow, and I don't really have anything that would be too great, but I do have an iridium quality tuna, so I guess I'll just bring that. Getting to level 60 was easy, and I got some more items for the community center like a ghost fish and some aquamarine, so I was pretty happy about that. Now finally, on day 10 of summer, 7 days after I needed it, I bought some hay for my chicken. I just bought enough to hold me over until the wheat grows in, which probably will be in a couple days, so I highly doubt that this was even worth it. I went ahead and donated the couple things that I still could donate to the community center, then planted more sunflowers to end off the night. Day 39 is the day of the potluck, so I can't really do much of anything other than just water my plants and do some fishing to get some money. I had some melons grown in, but unfortunately none were gold quality, so I would just hold on to one to donate, then sell the rest. I sat around until 1 and then headed to the potluck where I gave my iridium tuna and got a couple more friendship points with everybody even though I really just needed them with Haley. After the festival I went home and harvested the wheat I had which got me some hay. Good thing I just bought some and spent like a week trying to get it. My chicken better be grateful. To be fair though, I needed hay for a bundle so it's fine and I donated some other items to community center before ending off the night. I got some tomatoes on day 40 that I could donate, and after watering my crops I was pretty much out of energy since I stayed up way too late last night. I gifted Haley a sunflower and immediately got her up to 5 stars, so I was doing pretty well with this whole love thing. For the rest of the day I just fished and also realized I probably should not be wasting bait on the legendary fish since there's basically no way for me to catch it at my level. I figured that if the merchant doesn't have anything good on Sunday I'll try to get the backpack upgrade because I kinda need that really bad. On day 41 lots of things grew in, so I was hoping for some good money, which I definitely got because I was up to 13,000 gold after being at 1,000 just two days ago. I went to the mines and found a red mushroom that I could donate, and I gave Clint some copper for a request. I pulled up Clint's wiki because I wanted to see his schedule, but I also saw that he likes topaz, so I decided to be nice and give him one since I had plenty. But apparently when I tried to do this, Sebastian was walking by at the exact same time, and instead of giving the topaz to Clint, I gave it to Sebastian. I just took this as a sign not to reward incel, so I did not go back and give him that topaz. I wasted the rest of my energy on chopping trees and went to sleep early to make sure I had all of my energy tomorrow. The merchant was selling large milk on day 42, and I decided that I should buy it so I don't have to worry about getting a cow. Spoiler alert, I still got a cow anyway, so this was a waste, but it did seem like a good idea at the time. The TV said today was a bad luck day, but in the mines, half of the levels just had the ladders exposed and I even found a diamond. I checked in on my bats and started to get a little bit nervous because they haven't given me any fruit like cherries or apples and I still need a lot of that for bundles. I also realized that once I get to the bottom of the mines I'm gonna have to go to these skull caverns to buy things and that is significantly harder so I really need to plan my mine trips carefully to not run out too early. I ended off the day with level 4 combat and level 6 farming so I can finally make some quality sprinklers. Day 43 I had blueberries and a large egg so the community center was coming along nicely. Plus completing this bundle got me another quality sprinkler which would be nice. I ended up catching a red snapper and a tilapia which means I can complete the ocean fishing bundle but I ended up fishing a little bit more to try to get some treasure chests. By finishing that bundle it means I caught all the fish I could at the moment but I still took more time to fish because I needed the money. I sold my crops on day 44 then headed to the mines to try to get some jade for a request and the wizard wanted me to slay some dust mites so I figured I could kill two mites with one sword or whatever that saying is. I didn't have any luck finding Jade, but I got the dust mites pretty quickly and I was feeling pretty good. Uh, so good that I felt like I could finish off this blue slime with this amount of health. I could not. So now that means I lose everything in my inventory, which includes my best weapon, and I have to go from level 40 to level 48 tomorrow if I want to keep my money. That is kind of a lot of levels, especially without my best weapon, so I was really nervous and I didn't want to lose 15,000 gold. Day 45 is straight to the mines to make sure I keep my money. I really needed to get used to this hammer because it was a lot slower than the sword I was using, and when I got to level 45 I got pretty scared because there were a lot of enemies, but I did eventually manage to make it to level 48 with almost no energy to spare. 
That's okay though, because I got to keep my money and really that's all that matters. Since I have no energy, I just gifted Haley another sunflower and got her to six hearts, and also remembered I need to talk to the wizard to get my payment for killing those dust mites. You know, the whole reason I went to the mines in the first place? Okay, so we went down there to get 360 gold, and while we were down there we lost 3500 gold, so that's a profit of... Uh, I wasn't really sure what to do on day 46. I could try to buy more melons to get some gold quality ones, but to be honest with you, I really don't want to go back to the mines. I'm too scared. I headed over to gift Haley another sunflower, but got a heart event where she lost her bracelet, which for some reason was in the bushes behind Elliot's house. Elliot is the true final boss of this game. I went and confronted him about it, but he was just talking about, like, sand in his shoes, so I think he's innocent. After that I just foraged and knocked down some trees since I would need wood for a lot more of my building upgrades. The merchant is back on day 47 and I desperately need red cabbage because we are starting to run out of time in summer. But of course the merchant doesn't have any red cabbage and I realized that this would be the last day that I could actually plant red cabbage for it to grow so I started searching frantically on the wiki. I was under the impression that if you chose the guarantee year 1 completion button it meant you would get red cabbage seeds in time to plant them but apparently it just means that you will get them sometime in year one. What that means is I will now need to rely on the greenhouse to be able to grow the cabbage, so right now my main focus should be on crops and animals to finish the pantry. I kicked it into overdrive because I plan to buy a barn tomorrow and for more money making I made a mayonnaise machine for my eggs and another preserves jar for more jelly so I could get that passive income. After that it was just hitting trees and getting stones because the greenhouse is now the number one priority. Day 48 I went to the mines and my plan was to go out and buy a barn as well as eventually get another chicken so I could get a white egg to donate to the community center. I made it through to level 70 fairly quickly, and I even found more gold ore, so I had enough to donate thanks to that ore that I found all the way back on day 1. I first stopped by Pierre's to buy more melons since I need some gold quality crops much faster than before, and then I went over to Robin's to get the barn while I placed it in a horrible spot because I forgot to clear the area. Look, I made it here at 440, I did not have time to make that farm look good before. But this is definitely a weight off my shoulders for now because I've been needing to get a barn for quite a while. I ended off the day with level 6 foraging, meaning I could now make a lightning rod. On day 49, I didn't buy anything from the merchant, but she did remind me that I need to catch a puffer fish. I spent a while trying to catch one, but there's only a 4 hour window to get it, so I didn't end up getting it today. I was able to finish the blacksmith bundle with the gold I made, and I just needed fire quartz to finish the entire boiler room area, which should be coming up soon on level 80. Other than that, this day was the usual chores and fishing, and I ended off with level 7 fishing. I'm getting much closer to being able to get a legendary fish. Day 50 I had a lot of artisan goods to sell, so I was feeling pretty good about my money. I was also holding on to 21,000 in my wallet, so by now I wasn't that nervous about things since I was all good on money. It was the mines I'm scared of. But today is a fishing day and not a mines day since I still need that puffer fish before the end of the season. Before fishing I got Haley up to 7 hearts and caught a puffer fish with about 20 in-game minutes to spare. Okay, now I'm actually done with fishing this season. I decided to do a little bit of trash fishing because I needed cloth and since I don't have a sheep yet I could hope that the recycling machine would be able to give it to me so I just grinded on that for the rest of the night. I figured that on day 51 I would try to work on my monster eradication goals since I kind of put those on the back burner after the whole red cabbage greenhouse thing. It was nice to go to the higher levels with a good weapon because it meant things would go by much quicker. I made some progress but didn't manage to finish the goal so I just headed home where I realized that the melons take 12 days to grow so I definitely did not get them in enough time. That was um, quite the waste of money. This also means I really need gold quality corn to come through since now the gold quality melons were not possible. All of my careful planning ruined by that traveling merchant. I'm not sure how she ruined it, but she did. I got level 7 farming so I can make a loom to make cloth if I don't end up getting it from the recycling machine. My barn was built on day 52 which means I can get cows so it was time to head back to the mines to get them. The levels I was on in the mines started to introduce skeletons which I think is where things can go very wrong since these things can throw things to hurt you and you can't just run away from them like usual. Still I made it through relatively unscathed and headed straight to Marnie's to get a bucket and a cow named Sertabel because I guess my animals just have to have the word bell at the end of their name. I made my way back home and just fished for more soggy newspaper to try to get cloth. The reason that I wanted it so bad from the recycling machine is that rabbits also give wool in addition to rabbit's foot, so if I didn't have to buy a sheep it would be nice. 
I checked the cave and the fruit bat still did not give me anything good, so I'm starting to get really nervous about the fruits that I need. I leveled up mining and chose the geologist profession to try to get more gems for money. George wanted a hot pepper to rub on his legs for day 53, sure whatever, I don't care. The fruit bats must have heard my pleas though, because when I checked in the cave they had dropped off two peaches which I could donate and turn into jelly. As you can see, I was very excited. I mostly just sold things today to raise up money before the next season. I do want to try to upgrade my watering can soon because going to the mines and watering my crops in a day usually means no energy, so an upgrade definitely would help. I broke down and made a loom just in case I would need it to make cloth, but I'm still really hoping for good luck from the recycling machine. I started smelting some copper to possibly upgrade the can if I can remember tomorrow. I didn't. Yeah, day 54 was a Friday, and when I checked at the merchant, she was finally selling red cabbage seeds. On summer... 26. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. I'm not mad at all. Regardless of what the day was, I still needed to get them, so I went back to the mines, and I'm glad I went as early as I did because I was not getting very good luck. On level 78, the ladder was in the literal last rock that I hit, so it was just a really big waste of time. Luckily, the next level had a ladder right there, so that kind of made up for it. I made it out of the mines at 3 p.m., so it's a good thing the merchant stays open until 11, or I probably would have been cutting it way too close and misread cabbage seeds, which would have just completely lost me the challenge. I mean, I could still lose if I don't get the greenhouse quick enough, but let's focus on what we need right now. At the end of the day, I managed to get Haley up to 8 hearts. On day 55, Pierre started selling the bouquet so I can buy it to make Haley my girlfriend. From the rain yesterday, I got a battery pack which I put in the tunnel and was tasked with putting a rainbow shell in the train station, which I could not do until next season. I sold everything I had and knew that I wanted to buy out the vault room so I could get to the desert, but we were about to hit a new season so I didn't want to waste money on that yet. I decided to try to get some fire quartz, since that was the last thing that I needed to get the minecarts, which would help a lot with time, but when I got down there, I got close to dying almost immediately on level 82. But I gained my confidence back, and tried to head back down, and then barely escaped with one hit point left. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not risking all that for fire quartz. Luckily, I was able to level up combat to level 5, so now I deal more damage, which clearly I need. I checked with the merchant on day 56, and there wasn't anything good, so I decided to hold off on going to an elevator level today. Since it's one day before the end of the season and there wasn't really much else to do, I decided to go to the mines and finally reach a monster goal. I was only two cave bugs away from reaching that goal, so I quickly made my way down and took care of that, which means we now have one of three monster eradication goals that we need, so I was feeling really good. So good, in fact, that I headed back to level 80 to try to get fire quartz. And I died while I was down there. This means I now lose my hammer as well as the various things that I was going to sell that were in my pockets, and I need to get to level 83 tomorrow with worse weapons. Actually, maybe I spoke too soon because after waking up I headed to the Adventurer's Guild where my gift for killing the cave insects was another weapon. That was convenient. I made some bug steaks to prepare for tomorrow since I'm not going to be able to go buy anything that could help, and I also did a little bit of fishing to try to find some fish that would be able to replenish health. I just really did not want to die whenever I'm about to hit a new season. Fall started on day 57, and I sure wish I could enjoy it, but instead I have to go to the mines and risk losing all of my money. I only needed to get to level 83, so it shouldn't be that bad, but I'm still really nervous. Luckily I made it to the level 83 with all of my health and fine fire quartz, so I started to wonder... Do I risk it? I mean, I need crops, and I have money, and level 85 is pretty close. I decided I would go ahead and make it another elevator level down because I was in a pretty good place. I went ahead and bought some crops as well as a bouquet and donated the fire quartz which means now the minecarts are open which is huge. I finished off by planting everything that I had. On day 58 I made a cheese press since I had a cow and cheese can't sell for a lot more. I should have done this much sooner but honestly I just forgot. The special orders board was being built so that would mean really good money so I was excited about that. I got my 8 heart event with Haley, which honestly was pretty cute. It made me forget about the horrors of losing in the mines. Since it's still early fall I need to get all of the foraging items so I went out searching and found everything pretty quickly and completed the fall foraging bundle and got some seeds. I took my bouquet and asked Haley to be my girlfriend which she agreed to and I ended up getting some kind of funny dialogue since I hadn't talked to her since the heart event. You want to get more serious? I feel the same way. I'm kind of nervous, aren't you? Well, that's the dirtiest I've ever been. Yeah, man, watch out when we might have to censor this. The special orders board tasked me with killing some skeletons, which I would need to do anyway for monster eradication, so I figured I might as well get paid for it. I managed to kill 12 of them before running out of time in the day. 
First thing on day 59, I hit some trees to get some wood because I'll need the house upgrade to get married, then after that I'll try to get the axe upgrade again. I was starting to get pretty close to the bottom of the mines, and I needed to open the bust of the desert because if I get to the bottom of the mines and don't have these skull caverns, then I can't buy anything. I did some fishing for fall fish and managed to get everything I could at the moment other than a walleye which I needed rain for. I ran out of energy really fast because watering my crops was getting to be way too much, so I needed to figure out a better method. I decided to head to the mines on day 60 because I wanted to get some gold to make quality sprinklers. I probably should have done this before Fall 4, but there's nothing I can do about it now, so whatever. First, I had a decent bit of things to sell, but I was getting pretty bad luck with my corn still not giving me gold quality, so I started to get pretty nervous on that. I might have to consider getting some more corn seeds just in case. Selling items seemed to take up the entire day because I still have not gotten the backpack upgrade and there's nothing I can do about it today. I made it to the mines later than I wanted to, but I did get gold to make sprinklers and killed about half the skeletons that I needed to. It was merchant day on day 61, but I wasn't really as worried about it since I already got the red cabbage, so I'd only go to the mines if she had something that was really necessary since I don't want to waste a mine level now. She was selling wool, but I know I'm going to have to get either a sheep or a rabbit, so I didn't bother going for it. The bats came through again today and blessed me with two cherries, meaning I could donate one and make jam with the other. I still need a white large egg, but honestly right now I'm feeling pretty good about my progress, even though I still have a lot of upgrades that I need to make. I went back to the mines because Clint wanted 20 pieces of copper, and while I was there I got a bone sword from a skeleton, which was huge because this was actually a really good weapon that would be useful for the lower levels. While I was down there I also reached another monster eradication goal with the skeletons, which means I just need one more to finish off that goal. By the end of the day I just needed to kill 10 more to get the special order request done. Day 62 I decided that tomorrow I'll check with the merchant and see if there's anything good, and if not I'll upgrade my house. I'm expecting my bats to get me fruit, so I'm really not that worried about the artisan bundle because I'm pretty sure I can get either a duck or a goat for it. After thinking it through, I realized it might be better to upgrade my barn instead of my house because I have multiple upgrades to do for that whenever I need to get a pig. I went to the mines and killed all of these skeletons, so I got 6,000 gold and my reward for the monster eradication, which was this really cool skeleton mask. Doesn't do anything, but man, it looks cool, so it was worth it. Waking up on day 63, Clint gave me a geode crusher, which was huge because now I really don't need to use them anymore, I can just open up the geodes myself. I got another gold quality corn, which means I need just one more, which I'm pretty sure I can do. I headed to the mines and got to level 90 pretty easily, which gave me a really nice sword and I could keep my bone swords for backup. I then went and upgraded my barn because eventually I'll need almost all of those animals so I can try to keep things moving really quickly. I bought some more pumpkins and considered upgrading my axe but realized I didn't have enough iron so I just planted my crops and moved on. On day 64 my chicken finally made a large white egg which is putting me even closer to getting that greenhouse. I'm scared I'm going to cut things too close but I have faith. I still had 25,000 gold so I decided to just go ahead and buy that bundle in the vault because I would need it anyway and it was Monday so I still had time to get more money if I needed to. It also netted me the Crystallarium so I could get started on Operation Clone Diamonds for another steady income source. I stopped by the special order board and saw I could either donate bone fragment or eggs, which I had lots of both, but I chose the eggs because the request pays more. I got Haley up to 9 hearts and at the end of the day I just gathered more wood for upgrading. Day 65 was just fishing, where I caught a walleye which means the only thing I have left is the specialty fish bundle. I donated the items to the community center and realized that I never actually planted an apple tree, which is fine because I trust the bats. They haven't wronged me yet. It seems like every time I talk about the bats they bring me something, and day 66 is no different with them dropping off some peaches. I already had peaches, but I can still get good money from putting them in preserves jars. I went and checked the price for a goat and realized they are a lot more expensive than I thought, so I need to fish to try to get some money. I ended up catching a super cucumber which was cool, and I ended off the day with level 7 foraging. I had to get money on day 67. I planned to spend tomorrow upgrading the coop, buying a goat, and then upgrading my axe, so I needed almost 20,000 gold, which is probably not going to be possible, so I decided to settle for getting the axe and the goat because then I would still have money left over for the merchant. Not really much happened this day, I mainly just hit rocks and got level 8 fishing, which was pretty good. On day 68 the cart was selling a rabbit's foot as well as red cabbage seeds for a second time, which was kind of weird. I know I definitely want the rabbit's foot if I can get it because that will eliminate an entire upgrade that I would have to do on the coop. The mines were super easy so I dropped off my axe to upgrade and bought a goat named Kecho. Not Ketchup. Kecho. I went back to the merchant and realized I didn't have quite enough money to get the rabbit's foot but I sold things to Pierre and was able to fund it. If I had spent much more time in the mines this might not have been possible but I was able to get all the things that I wanted. I also got my last quality corn that I needed so that took a lot of pressure off as well. 
On day 69, I was feeling good about most of my bundles other than the animal-based ones because those required a lot of money. I did some fishing today to try to get money to open up the bus since I will need to get out there soon if I make it to the bottom of the mines. I also had a horrible realization that I'm sure some of you already figured out. The fern in the chef's bundle is only available in summer in the secret woods, so the axe upgrade is not going to help me with that. There are still things I need in there, so it's not a huge waste, but I just completely overlooked this fern. Not all hope is lost, because technically I can still get one from either the cart or on a prehistoric level of the skull caverns, which would be pretty tough. This really put a damper on my plans and made me basically have to focus solely on the vault bundles to be able to go to the desert. Day 70 must have been trying to make me feel better because I got all 5 gold quality pumpkins I needed on the first yield, which means I finished the gold quality crop bundle. I headed over to the secret woods and it's good that I'm here but I still felt really dumb for not doing this sooner. I caught a wood skip and grabbed another red mushroom that was needed for the community center then decided to pay off the 10k bundle in the vault because I wanted to get the hardest ones out of the way. I still needed a purple mushroom, which I would have bought from a merchant if I knew I was picking fruit bats, but it's fine, I'm sure I can either find one or just buy one. I ended off the day with level 8 farming and getting the recipe for a keg. Day 71 was a bit of a desperate one to be honest with you. I was feeling like I wasn't doing what I needed to do so, honestly at one point I considered just making gold bars to try to sell and make money. It got kind of bad. Instead, I spent all day in the mines looking for purple mushrooms by just going to floor 81 over and over again. This actually wasn't that wasteful though because I got a ton of diamond while doing this, so speedrunners, feel free to steal this technique. It's an easy get-rich-quick scheme. I didn't end up seeing any purple mushrooms, but like I said, I got a lot of diamonds, so I was still feeling pretty good about it. I ended off the day with level 6 binding and combat. It's the festival on day 72, and honestly, I could not be bothered to get items to make my box. I have plenty of other things to worry about. The bats ended up dropping off the final fruit that I would need for the artisan bundle, which is great. Since it was a festival day, I can't do anything else, so I just went back to searching for a purple mushroom, which I actually did find pretty quick. While at the festival, I made sure to get a star drop to raise up my health, and I maybe gambled just a little bit. But I also bought dried sunflowers, because that is Haley's favorite flower, and it'll be good for whenever she moves in with me. I donated the purple mushroom, but I really had a bad feeling about the chef's bundle. If Gus wasn't such a chill guy, I would hate him. It was raining on day 73, and I didn't have enough hay to feed all of my animals, but honestly, my goat is the most important right now, so so it gets priority. I made a keg and finished off the artisan bundle which got me another keg so whoops I guess I just should have waited there. I would still need the big barn but it was okay because I didn't need to upgrade my coop anymore since I was planning to get wool from a sheep. I ended up finishing the vault which means I can finally go to the desert so that is a small weight off of my shoulders yet again. I was pretty close to getting the eggs that I needed for the omelette special order, and it would be a pretty good way to get money for an upgrade to my barn or house. I also remembered that I'm going to need to get a silo pretty soon for winter, but that's something that I'll take care of later on. Hopefully I remember. On day 74, I mainly just did some selling and fishing. I went to catch a wood skip, which I for some reason thought I needed, but ended up getting a diamond, as well as another weapon, which once again would come in handy if I ever had another level 13 accident. I also accepted a special order of getting 80 hardwood, which should be easy because I haven't harvested much of any of those, so I should have a lot still left over. It is straight to the mines on day 75 because I need to upgrade my house now to be able to cook and get married. I got to level 100 but I couldn't do too much celebrating because I needed to sell some items to get me up to 10,000 gold to be able to actually afford the home upgrade. I did purchase the upgrade and figured it would be smart to also buy some more hay just in case it's a while before I can get the silo, and I'll also need a heater because I think whenever I get some animals in winter I don't want them to get mad. I didn't get it this time, but once again, that's something that I'll need to remember for later. I wanted to try to finish up the hardwood, but I didn't have enough trees spawned, so I just had to wait a little bit longer. I also needed a few more eggs to spawn, but those things just come with time, so instead I plan to go to the desert to get some fish. Day 76, and I am broke. Like, two gold in my pocket broke. Luckily I had a lot of things that I could sell, so I got back up in money pretty quickly. I finished up the hardwood which got me 2000 gold and I plan to finish the egg quest tomorrow so I should be looking pretty good in terms of money. I headed out to the desert and caught a sand skip and that was pretty much all that I could do here so it kind of felt like a waste of 500 gold but also it really wasn't because I finished the fish tank meaning there is only 3 more places left that I need to finish the community center. On day 77 I got my money from Gus for donating the egg so I was feeling pretty good about that. Now to everyone at home that's saying I forgot about my girlfriend Haley. Yeah, you're right, I did. But I can't let up right now, because I still need to focus on getting money and have winter be the season where I take care of all these small things and possibly the monster eradication goals. It's been a little while since I took a day to fish, so let's go fishing. Oh, why am, why am I fishing specifically right here? 
No, no reason, no, no legendary reason. No, see, if I wanted to catch a legendary fish, I'd be fishing right here, like I'm doing right now. But I didn't catch a legendary, so we know that is not what I was doing. I'm not distracted at all. I woke up to a bigger house on day 78, so it is time to cook. I had everything I needed, so I quickly made a fried egg and maki roll for the chef bundle, which means I just need the truffle and fern for that. Today I plan to go to the mines and get the silo and hopefully get the skull cavern key to make sure I can get the fiddlehead fern. I bought the silo and also got some more eggplant since that would mature in time and I could get some extra money for that at the end of the season. After that it was just right back to the mines to slay monsters. Today was another selling day and as you can see I still don't have the backpack upgrade. I know what you're thinking, wait wasn't that a rule? You're not allowed to um, upgrade your backpack? Nope, no rule. I'm just stupid. I just never bought it. I accepted another special order for getting ectoplasm from a ghost, so I headed back to the mines since killing ghosts could go toward my monster eradication goals. I found plenty of ghosts, but none of them dropped ectoplasm, so this day definitely felt like a waste. On day 80, I finally had some wine, which was nice, but since I can't sell any crops since it was Wednesday, I decided to go fishing to make some money. I fished for a bit and gave Haley my last sunflower, then started to wonder if this was even possible. Like, I still need three apples, and technically the bats and the merchant could come through, but like, it seems pretty unlikely. I'll still do what I can because maybe there will be some kind of miracle, but it seems like a lot of things are left up to RNG right now. I made sure to get some more stone so I could upgrade the barn soon. Day 81 was another selling day because I needed to get up to 25,000 gold to get the barn upgrade. I sold off my wine for 15 gold, so I wonder if this is even supposed to be used for something like this because clearly it is not worth selling. My silo was built, so I cut down all of the grass that I was too lazy to cut, I mean, uh, saving for the silo. I had a feeling that my lightning rods were going to give me battery packs tomorrow, so I plan to make a slime egg press because slime eggs sell for a lot, so it seems like it would be worth it. I was close to 25,000, but I still needed a little bit more money, so I went catfishing and was secretly hoping to get a dinosaur egg because dinosaur mayonnaise sells for a lot. I caught a catfish and had the crop fairy come by to bless my very sad display of crops. So, thanks I guess. I got some pumpkins and battery packs on day 82, so my plan was set in motion to make a slime egg press. I don't actually have enough slime to make an egg, but I also needed to get some fire quartz to make it, so it all works out. I ended up finding a mushroom floor in the mine, so that was great. Remember when I spent like two days trying to get a purple mushroom? Well, here's five of them. I actually got pretty close to dying in the mines, but I got what I needed to make the egg press, just not what I need to make the egg, so I'll have to come back and get some more. To end the day, I made sure I had enough resources to upgrade my barn because I plan to do that tomorrow. On day 83, my goat ketchup finally produced large goat milk, which means I need to either get wool or a duck egg to get the greenhouse. Today is actually a festival day, which means I can't buy or sell like I wanted, so it's back to the mines to hunt for slime. While I was there, I found the saddest infested room ever. Three monsters. Watch out. I ended up with enough slime to make an egg, which was good, but it may not have been worth all the effort to be honest with you. I did find a diamond though, and that was definitely worth it. I was getting kind of desperate when it came to the fruit bats, so I did a little dance to hopefully entice them to give me a pomegranate and some apples. After that I headed to the best festival and got the golden pumpkin, which I can't sell because it has to be sold by the shipping bin, and I also can't place it down, so instead I'll give it to Haley since it's a universally loved item. It's the last day of the season on day 84, and since I don't have to water my crops, I headed straight for the mine so I could do the barn upgrade. I was able to find another diamond and made it down to level 110 to upgrade my barn. At this point, I'm just hoping for a duck egg or a wolf from the merchant because I really can't afford to buy a sheep or upgrade the coop to buy a duck. I'm putting a lot of faith in that, but hopefully it'll all work out. I did end up getting my slime egg, so at least I can get some money from that, and I leveled up my combat to level 7. Day 85 was the first day of winter, so luckily I don't have to rush to the mines to buy crops today. I do however need to make more mayonnaise machines since I have a lot of eggs and mayonnaise can sell for a lot more than just raw eggs. I got a special order to catch some trash, which is my specialty, so this should be a breeze. I sold as much as I could to go towards buying a pig, and if you see a problem with me buying a pig right now then just hold on, I'll figure it out eventually. I also realized that nobody's going to buy the slime egg, and instead it would have to sell in the box, which I can't do since that's banned, so that really was a waste of battery and slime. Since it's the first day of the season, I went forging, but unfortunately found nothing, so instead let's trash fish since that's a little bit easier. I forgot to get a heater by day 86, so I guess my animals will just freeze. That's actually the least of my problems though, because I misunderstood how pigs work in this game, so they actually cannot get truffles in winter. When I skimmed through the wiki, it made it seem like the only requirement was that the ground needed to not have anything on it, so this is really not good. 
Once again, I can possibly get a truffle from the merchant, but I only have a few visits from her left, so I think it might be over for us. I gave Haley the golden pumpkin, which brought her up to 10 hearts, so that was good at least. Uh, this season, I'm mainly going to focus on monsters to get that eradication goal completed, since the community center just might not be possible. Upon checking it, it seems that the Duggies would probably be the easiest, but I only ran into a few while I was down there, so I would need to come back. On day 87, I went to the mine so I could buy a sheep, since the pig will not be of any use to us now, and I found an immunity ring, which seemed like it would be pretty good for the skull caverns. I made it to level 115 of the mines and saw Linus naked in the lake, so let's make sure not to eat any of those lake fish. I bought a sheep whose name defaulted to Wellello, and I liked that, so I went ahead and kept it. While I was there, I bought some shears for the wool and bought heaters so the sheep could grow wool quick enough. I checked in with the bats and they had dropped off some cherries, which are not really what I need, but at least it's fruit, so I guess we take that. I did a bit of forging, but still didn't get a snow yam, even though I was hitting all the artifact spots that I could see. I also unfortunately realized that I need to get to level 9 forging to be able to get a rain totem, because if I want to get married, it needs to be raining. Once again, this was just poor planning on my part. I should have tried to get married before winter where it doesn't rain, but I just didn't really think about it up to this point. I finally remembered to donate my goat milk on day 88, which I got like a week ago, but you know what, it's good that it even made it in there. I checked around for dig spots to get a snow yam, but all I found were leprechaun shoes and no snow yam, so that sucked. I saw I still needed 5 more duggies to complete the monster eradication goal, so I headed to level 15 and just farmed duggies until I killed my last one at 8.30 and officially completed one of my goals for this challenge. I also got a hard hat, but I like the skull mask better, so I don't really care. I checked in with the merchant on day 89, but there really was not anything good there. I still needed to go to the mines because I need to get these skull caverns as soon as possible, and I really cannot wait anymore. I got down to level 120 of the mines, not even to buy anything, but just to get to the skull caverns, which were going to be much more dangerous than I remember. I made it out there and only made it to level 5 before deciding to tap out because I just needed to get my feet wet for the caverns before really diving in. I'll need to actually prepare the next time that I go. On day 90, the bats gave me an orange, which means they have officially given me every fruit other than an apple or pomegranate that I need, so that is both hilarious and awful. I got tired of trying to find a yam in its artifact spots, and I learned that you can get them from anywhere, so I just started hitting the ground, which worked surprisingly well. I figured that forging snow yams and winter roots might be a good way to get to level 9 forging for the rain totem, so that's all I did all day. I am desperate. The yams actually did sell for a lot though, so that was good. I finally got wool on day 91, which means I can complete the animal bundle, and the only thing left is the bulletin board. This also, of course, means that I get the greenhouse, and I think I'll make the red cabbage just in time since it takes 9 days to mature. At this point, I'm really not worried about money since I would only need to buy from the merchant, and we know she doesn't sell anything good. I checked in, and that statement is still true because today there was nothing good for sale, but I still do have a couple more chances. After that, I went straight back to foraging on the beach because I really need that rain totem to get married. I also realized that I had some Autumn's Bounty, which added plus two to foraging, and I don't really know what that means, but it seems like it would be good. I also learned that chopping trees counts towards foraging, so I focused on that for a little while. On day 92, I got the greenhouse so I could plant the saddest singular crop in there. I made sure to drop off a sprinkler in there too, just in case I forgot to water this thing, and it was a festival day again, so I chopped trees until I won the fishing festival because I am great at fishing. I decided to go back to the Skull Cavern on day 93, so I had to prepare. Step 1. Get some cheese for energy. Step 2. Sell items to get my- Sell items? Wait, why did I do that? What happens if I die? That, this really doesn't seem like a good idea. Step 3, load up on bombs I had been saving up to make it through extra quick. And I was actually making really great progress. I was using bombs effectively, I was conserving energy, and I had a decent bit of health, and I even made it down to a prehistoric level, which had the chance to give that fiddlehead fern. It was also super dangerous, but I looked around and saw no sign of the fern, but I did see a dino egg. I probably should have left, and I would have been smart, but I let greed take me over, and I wanted that dino egg for if I did the 200 days and I could have dinos on my farm. I actually did pretty well for a little while. I went to pick up the dino egg, and I got chased by this flying enemy and got killed right next to the ladder. It's kind of poetic, isn't it? Now I lost my main weapon, as well as the dino egg I wanted and everything else I was holding on to, and tomorrow I get to go back and make it to level 9 or else I lose all of my money. I took the morning of day 94 to prepare for my trip back to the Skull Caverns by making food and bombs with what I could. I luckily had a lot of weapons stored away, but none were as good as what I had before, so this was not going to be easy. I played slow and careful and got pretty lucky with the hold on level 8, which pushed me past level 9, so I kept my money and I wasn't going to push my luck by trying to go any further. Instead, I just went back home and got some iron so I could make more bombs for when I do decide to go back. 
On day 95, I was determined to get that fern. I crafted like 10 bombs and made it past level 25 real quick, so I was feeling like I was doing really well. I even made it to a treasure room, which had the possibility to drop a rain totem, but instead all I got was some energy tonic, which I'm sure could be useful sometime. I made it past level 30, which wasn't a prehistoric floor, but I was still proud of it, so you can't take that away from me. I decided to take a break from the caverns on day 96 and just focus on foraging and talking to people. Evelyn taught me the garden pot recipe, which I'm sure would have been useful before when I was struggling for a greenhouse. I got sent 10,000 gold for making it past level 25 of the mines, which was nice, but I don't really have anything to spend it on, sadly. The wizard wanted some void essence and Clinton wanted me to give Emily an amethyst, so I guess I'll do both of those things today. I got my 10 heart event with Haley where I had the chance to kiss her, but instead I just had to check the wiki and accidentally clicked the wrong button. You think I would have learned my lesson by now, but no, I still haven't. I gave Emily the amethyst, and she liked it so much that she kissed me in front of my girlfriend, who also happened to be her sister, but I guess she just didn't care. I looked through the social list, and it was pretty sad, and I doubt I can fix it in the next four days, so maybe I'll just need to turn my attention somewhere else. I still wanted to get a legendary fish, and the glacier fish was in season, so I loaded up on Dish of the Seas and made my way to where it spawns. I had some trouble at first, but I remembered all the mistakes I made, and I knew I couldn't miss this too, so I locked in and was finally able to catch that glacier fish. I was pretty happy about it. At the end of the day, I got level 8 foraging, but it really doesn't even matter because I need truffle oil for a rain totem, and I couldn't make it anyway because I don't have truffles, so looks like marriage is officially off the table. On day 97, I decided that I wanted a tank for my glacier fish, and for the Skull Cavern, since there aren't elevators, I figured getting to level 10 in there would allow for buying. That seemed like a reasonable rule. I got there and didn't get too far down before realizing that I desperately need bombs to make any good progress. I headed over to the regular mines and started to farm iron to get some more bombs. I stopped by the merchant on day 98, and I'm pretty sure that she was taunting me because she was selling red cabbage. Not the seeds for red cabbage, but an actual red cabbage, which I did not know she did. That made me kind of mad, but lucky for me, this is the last time that I'll see her. Good riddance, honestly. Obviously, I didn't buy the red cabbage because I'm growing one right now, so I don't need it. I put a lot of work into this one that I am growing, so I'm not going to undermine that by just purchasing one. I did, however, make it to level 10 in the Skull Cavern, so I could purchase a tank that I put my glacier fish in so he could watch me while I sleep. On day 99, honestly, there really wasn't anything to do, so I just kind of walked around and ended up doing a special order for catching lake fish, where I got 18 out of the 20 on that day. Yeah, don't think I forgot about Linus swimming in there. I also headed to the first night market, but there really wasn't anything I wanted, so I just headed out. And now it is officially day 100, and apparently I did my math wrong, because the red cabbage was not ready at all. I blame the cart lady for this. I checked the cave, and nope, the bats still did not give me anything, so the community center was officially not able to be completed, which was very disappointing. I felt like I was doing pretty well for a little while, at least. I donated something to the museum, which got me a skeleton statue, which seemed fitting since the monster eradication goals were the only ones I actually completed, so I placed it outside of my house. I wanted to gift Emily something, so I headed to the saloon and got a cutscene for the giant omelet, where Marnie says the words farm soft farm eggs, which just kind of made me laugh and I wanted to show it. And for the rest of day 100, I decided to just go around and give thanks to everybody that I could to end things off. Oh wait, it's not over? Yeah, that's right, today is day 100 plus 1. We aren't out of this challenge yet. It, what do you mean? Yeah, of course this counts. Come on man, let me have this. The red cabbage was grown and I donated it, which means I was without four items to complete the community center, which were the fern, the truffle, three apples, and a pomegranate. Some of these things are definitely my fault, like the fruit, I put just way too much faith in the bats and I should have just bought the trees. Other things like the truffle and the fern probably could have been possible, but with the shops closing so early and having to stack all my buying on certain days, it did feel like maybe it was more difficult than it normally would be. Either way, I didn't reach all my goals, so I did fail the challenge on this 100 days, which is pretty unfortunate. But one thing you learn from a Souls-like game is that there's always a phase two. Let me know if you want 200 days.